Thank you for watching our webinar recording from the series Making Home Learning Content Accessible in Early Learning and Childcare. The demo materials that are included in these webinars will give you some ideas for some free online resources that exist. However, when planning learning activities, you'll be including a variety of learning activities that are off screen and away from devices as well, including health and wellbeing and outdoor learning activities. Okay, so today's webinar is going to focus on SWAY. Our target audience is early learning and childcare practitioners, but of course with any of our webinars, they're open to everyone, um, not just a specific group. Um, what we want to show you this afternoon is how Sway can be used um, as a digital storytelling tool. It can help you to create really nice professional and interactive um, designs or pieces of content together all in one place. Um, it has so many time saving tools built in that does all this hard work for you. All you need to focus on is bringing your content in and Sway will make it look nicely for you. It can transform like, photos, videos, audio recordings, um, charts, you might have tweets, um, it might be surveys, you know, it can bring it all in and it can embed it all really nicely in a polished format that you can share with ease um, and you can share um, in a nice accessible way as well. Um, the great thing about Sway is once you've shared the link to it, you can go in and update it as many times as you can. So it's, a, it's like a working document, if you like, um, or an ongoing learning story. You can look at it that way and you don't need to reissue different links. Um, once those links have gone out, um, that, you know, that, that's, that's all you need. Um, so I'm going to show you a couple of um, examples. And then I'm going to show you where on Go you access Sway, so where you get into it about, um, where you can find it, and then we'll do a bit of demo of creating a Sway ourselves. Um, and I've got some content up my sleeve um, that we can use um, that would be sort of relevant to the, the pieces of content um, that you're trying to share um, with your learners and your families at home. Um, we are aware that the early learning and child care audience is very different um, from in school. They're, they're not able to sign into Glo. they're not able to manage passwords um, and I think it would be quite unfair um, to expect that of them at the early level. Um, so the next few webinars including this one are going to look at ways that we can get around that. So how can we you know, bring that learning, that content, how can we um, bring it into the homes of our ELC children, how can we make it accessible to them and what can we do that makes it a wee bit more interactive, you know, we're maybe not having video calls like they're doing further up the school and in secondary school, but there are some other things out there that can offer us the space to have that sort of real time dialogue um, and it's not just all about um, video calls as well, so let's get on to it. Okay, so this should be the first example I have for you here is a Sway. So if you're brand new to Sway, if you've never seen it before, it's very different from PowerPoint. Um, it flows much, much smoother. Um, it doesn't have to be, you know, a scroll up and down. You can scroll from side to side as well. And I often choose the side to side, um, the vertical scroll to navigate through it because that's the way we turn the pages off a book. Um, and I think that's just a very natural way for young children to be able to um, swipe through the content. So this is a, an interactive learning story from um, a nursery and they've shared this with me so I've got permission to use this. Um, and the topic um, was the very hungry caterpillar. So there's a little bit of text at the beginning there um, that sort of sets the scene. So it's talking about you know how we got into this um, topic. And, um, oh, sorry, I thought somebody was going to ask a question there. Then um, we have, oh, I've got a bad echo there. I'm just going to mute everyone again. Okay, hopefully that should be a wee bit better now. Dawn, let me know, please. Just shout in if there's any sound issues. Let me know. You've lost your voice at the moment. I'm 
there we are that should be a wee bit clearer now I've, I've gone and muted everyone again I'm actually signed in on two devices so the sound um, issue could have been at my end but just give me a shout if there's any other echoes or if you hear or don't hear me and I'll get that sorted Okay, so this um, learning story that's um, been put on this way was, of course, um, during one of the school closures. Um, and what we have here is examples of the staff still um, trying to engage with the learners at home. So we've got a video recording here of one of the members of staff reading a story. And then we've got a try at home activity, so a learning at home activity. So we've got the text here and then a wee example um, of what could be done. Um, and then there was a little video and that's been embedded straight from YouTube so that was popped in there as well and then the parents and carers of these children in this particular centre then used email um, to send in examples of photographs of the learning at home and then the members of staff were then able to upload it so it was a two-way um, learning story here so it wasn't just the staff um, uploading different ideas and things you know it's an ongoing piece of work and the children were able to share what was going on at home as well okay so that's one very real example here and then i'm just going to talk you through a demo example of anywhere elc and this is our learning at home learning story so we've got a photograph um, in the background here. Um, I'm sure it looks very familiar to you. I think this is probably courtesy of a community play catalogue that I borrowed this photo from. Um, so a photo of the um, establishment. So it's something instantly that the children recognise. You know, that's my nursery, that's where I go. So you could add some text, you could be introducing the purpose of your shui, you could be talking about the type of learning activities that are going to be included, how often they're going to be updated, and then you could have a bit of description about how families are going to communicate, or offer, offer them to communicate, and I'll come back to that soon. Now you might want to have a, vo a voice recording in here because we want this to be accessible to our young learners as well, and they're not all reading, so... You may also want to leave an audio message welcoming everyone to the Sway. And what's really nice about that is the familiarity of your voice. Um, so you can all be adding little messages depending on you know how many practitioners are in your establishment. You could even just have a welcome se section in here or a hello section um, with your photographs and a wee voice recording underneath as well. Um, if you wanted, you could then also upload um, voice recordings that have been translated. So you might want to use um, an online translator um, app or site and you might want to you know ha type your your words in in English and then record it being read out in that um, additional language as well if you want to support all of your families just scrolling along a wee bit now you might want to have some photographs of areas around your nursery just as a wee recap just a wee reminder about what we do at nursery um, you know what, what what areas we've got where we can play um, and so on and then excuse me you might want to add in some learning activities now how you split this is completely up to you i've just <clears throat> put in a couple of different examples here i think we've got a literacy one a numeracy one a health and well-being one that might not be the route you go down you know it might be whatever your topic work is it's absolutely up to you how you would split that up okay and i've got a little photo in there so if there are literacy activity here again got a photograph here of our book corner we could have some description in here about what our activity is and this particular one um, it's about aliens love underpants this is like the story of the week you know it might be a story of the week a story of the day it just really depends on you know how many people are in your establishment how manageable it is for you to be able to update this um, and you know the, the, way, the way that you normally do things so we might have had a video here of a member of staff reading out the story. Now, bearing in mind copyright is a big issue. Um, back in March, you know, there was lots of questions about is, is this okay? Can we read it out? If the author themselves haven't given permission, if you don't know, 
um, there were unlisted recordings. So maybe uploading a, a video recording to YouTube, but having it unlisted. So it wasn't out there in the public domain. It was only people with the link that could access it. So only the people um, that you, you, the audience you were trying to access um, within your nursery. And then, you know, after a period of time, then it was removed again. And that seemed to be um, the most common practice that was happening back in the springtime. So you could have your recording uploaded here and then you could have an activity. So this example here, I just click on the hyperlink, is taking us to BBC Bite Size, to the um, Word Waves activities where you can do a wee bit more with Aliens Love Underpants. And if you've never came across this, and I'll admit I only discovered this um, just before Christmas, it's a really fantastic resource um, for pre-readers. So they can, let's see this one here, I'll give you a little example. What? Speed it up a wee bit. As it reads, it focuses on this wave here, so it Big surprise! When, when aliens fly down to Earth. It just helps to encourage um, you know, engagement with the story because it's giving you the line to focus on and the line moves up and down um, as the text is spoken as well. So that's a really useful resource. Um, you just pop that in there. Okay, so you've got a link in there. Now, what you might want to have as well is a wee voice recording so the children know exactly, you know, what what is this? What's going to happen when we go here? Okay, and then you can also embed content directly in from YouTube as well. Um, now, you can decide, and we'll come to this soon, what sort of size you want your photos and your videos, what layout you want them to be. Um, and it looks a wee bit different um, on your mobile device as well. So it's very clever with Sway, um, you know, depending on if you're looking at it on a, a laptop or a mobile device, it all fits nicely to the screen. So that's just a, a video that's been pulled in there from YouTube. And earlier on today, actually, we were on a webinar this morning, and this is something that you might find really helpful. So we were talking about adverts, you know, popping up, and they're sometimes, most of the time, really not appropriate. There's a little hack. Um, so when you're putting your YouTube link in, if you insert a hyphen in between the T and the U of tube, that will stop the ad um, popping up. And thanks very much to Dawn um, for sharing that with us earlier on. Um, so if anybody wants to know any more about that, we can we can um, pop something in the, the comments at the end for you about that. But really handy, really helpful to know. And then moving on in this way, we've then got a wee sort of pause for thought um, part. So we've, we've titled this a circle time blather. It might not be a circle time blather. It might just be a wee chat time, a wee blather, a discussion point, whatever you want to call it. But as you know, you know we're not they're not in and out of glow, so we're not stopping to have a video call or anything like that. We're probably not going to have you know a really rigid um, sort of routine or rota. You know where we're, we're all going to um, have a discussion at X time during the day because it doesn't always really work like that. Um, with early years and we don't always know who's got access to what devices you know and what um, connectivity they have and things at home so I would be keeping it sort of as open um, ended as possible but what we've got here is we've got this is called a Padlet and we've got this embedded in here and we've got a session on Padlet on Friday at one o'clock um, so if you want to come back more, there'll be more on that there but what Padlet allows you to do is have a um, real-time conversation so it's like a board a conversation board and it's got various different layouts but I've just got it set up here um, in a chat layout so you can pop your message in and then in real time somebody can reply so it might be a you know um, what did you think of the story aliens love underpants or you might be wanting to ask a key question about something that happened in that story and how can um, how can you reply? Let's see various different ways you can reply here. Um, you can upload a file, so you might have something on your computer. You know, it might be maybe um, a photograph or something of the the child reading the story. Um, it could be you might want to add a link from another site. Um, it could be a photograph as well. I think we've said that already. Um, and where is my 
I want to find there's a what I discovered is you can um, answer via why is it not coming up answer via a whiteboard drawing as well so for some reason that one's not loading I'll need to check my link again but what's really great and I've got an example of it further on is they can without going anywhere else they can upload a, a whiteboard so that it gives them the option to draw so the children can then draw their response and draw their feedback um, then similarly again we've got the maths activity um, this one is taking them to a site that has um, various different manipulatives so we've chosen um, the cuisineer rods here because that is something um, that they might be familiar with um, in nursery and you could have this set up any way you wanted. It could be, you know, can you make a picture of, you know, whatever, um, how many 10 blocks did you use? How many two blocks did you use? And then they could, um, if they have the um, devices, they could then screenshot this and it could be then uploaded um, into the, the space. Okay, so here's my example one here. Okay. How do aliens measure underpants? So the member of staff can set the question and then they don't have to go anywhere else because it's all here within the, the sway. So it's all embedded in the sway. And then... Where has it gone? Don't want to do that. Don't want to do that. There absolutely was last week um, the option here for whiteboards. So I need to go in and see where that's gone because I then joined from my phone um, and I pretended that I was a young learner and I had drawn my picture here and the, the parent helped to type um, the wee bit of text there to go along with the picture. So you can see how nicely that really works. So it's really, you know, bringing the child's voice um, to the forefront as well, even though you're not able to see them face to face. Um, and at the end of this example, Sway, um, what I have here is a, a survey area for parents and carers, because what you don't want to happen with the Padlet, you know, is it then becoming a forum for, you know, other things as well. So you just want this to be, you know, the, the sort of the child's voice place um, where all the comments and the children's questions come through. Um, although it's great to get dialogue from parents as well, you know, if, if they were maybe getting into the nitty gritty of things or perhaps even, you never know, maybe wanting to make a complaint about something or, you know, chatting with other parents and then it ends up becoming a, you know, um, organising a, you know, a, a walk together to the park or something. That's kind of taken away from the purpose of your sway. So you would maybe want to have a wee bit of um, dialogue at the beginning about, you know, this is a space um, for the children's voice to be heard. There will be other um, spaces for parents and carers to be able to share their thoughts and views as well. And what we've got here just at the end is a Microsoft form and that's just been completely embedded into the sway. So again, you don't have to send an additional link. Parents and carers aren't having to go anywhere else. It's all here. So it's our um, Anywhere ELC Parent and Carer Learning at Home Feedback form. And it would be anonymous, so ignore that it says hi Eva there, it would be an anonymous one. Okay, so just some basic questions here um, about is the child engaged with home learning content? How is the amount of time spent on activities? Is there a balance um, across all areas of the curriculum? How is the communication via Padlet helping? Um, has my child got a positive opinion of his or herself as a learner? And then a section here for more comments. And you know, you would make it clear how often you were going to be evaluating this as a staff team, if it would be, you know, weekly or fortnightly or however, and then that would help you to plan um the the, the future learning because you're not having that same face-to-face -face dialogue um, that you usually have when centres are open. So I hope that makes that kind of a wee bit clearer um, about what Sway can do um, and what it looks like. We're going to go in now to a completely blank one um, and I will show you how you can add content, um, how you can design it and then how you can share it because that's the most important part. Okay, so first of all, how on earth do we access SWE? I'll just maybe actually stop and see if we've got any questions first there, John. There's just one or two that pop up. 
There's one or two just the ones with their pictures, but I've let them know that you're going to be recording the webinar in a day or so. No problem. That's great. Okay. So when you log into Glow, um, you'll have the same launch pads as me, but what you have on your launch pad might be a wee bit different. Because on my personal one here, I've organised this into things that I use most often. But what you are looking for is this Office 365 Home Tile. Now, if you don't have that already on your launch pad, if you go to the blank tile that says Add, and then it's App from Library, and if you do a search for Office 365, and then this red one here, if you click on that, and then it will say Add to Launchpad. Mine says Remove because it's there already, but if you click Add to Launchpad, that will then give you the shortcut to Microsoft Office 365, in which its way is a part of. Then once you're in there, Look down the side here, you've got a shortcut to all your apps. Sway is a green icon with an S, not to be confused with SharePoint, which I often do. It's got a, a square background to it. This one here. Eva, I'm just on a white page at the moment. That's, it's, you know what it is? Ladies, a bit slow. I think it's a little bit of a lag. Right. Okay, okay. I often find that in the afternoon the connectivity where I am is a wee bit slower and I used to always think it was um, the children getting home from school and all gaming or, or maybe going on to go to do their homework but I'm not sure, there must just be, it must just be busier here in the afternoon because it definitely does slow down for me so I'll try and keep an eye on my second screen um, just to make sure I'm not talking ahead from what you can see. And one wee quick question Eva. Yes. McMenemy is asking, you know, along with the recording, she's asking about the visual. It will be the whole recording with the visuals as well. It will. Okay, so we're going to click on a new blank sway. Okay, and then what we can do, which is really handy with sway, is every little thing we, we um, change and add, we can then click on the play and have a wee look at it and see what it looks like. So... I'm going to give this one a title, Anywhere ELC Home Learning. And then I might want to give it a background as well. So I can choose, with all the other Microsoft products, I can choose something um, from online if I wanted to, but you might want to make this you know, a wee bit more relevant and in the context um, of your settings. So then you might want to upload a photo from your device. Okay, and I've got a little, here's one I made earlier folder here um, of different photographs. So I'll just use the same one again. Okay, so let's see, I've just closed that down. Let's see, how does this look so far? Okay, right, I've got my background picture and I've got my title. Let's go back to edit. Now, I'm not going to worry too much just now about the layout or the style or the font or anything. I want to get all my content on here first and then I can edit all those little things at the end. Um, now, the beauty of Sway is I might be wanting to work on this with a colleague at the same time. You absolutely can do that. Um, up here at the share option, you're looking to invite people to edit alongside you. So you would click on the edit alongside you link and then you would give them this link and that means that they could then be working on this in real time with you. So you could all be doing wee sections each um, and it refreshes automatically. Or you might prefer to do a wee bit and then pass it on um, and then you can go back and edit it at any time. So I've got my title there. I really want that to stand out, so I'm just going to hit the emphasis button here and emphasise that. Next, I would like another card. So it's a wee bit like when you're using your slides in PowerPoint. You just add a new blank one and then you put your content on it. But instead of just getting a generic slide, you have your options here. So what would you like to add next? Is it going to be text? Is it going to be an image? A stack is a stack of photographs, so we saw some photos earlier on that I was able to click through. Um, that's what the stack is. 
um, gives you further options of text for different headings and then it gives you your media options here so if you were maybe uploading a YouTube video or you know something from um, maybe a Microsoft form that you want to embed in it this is this is where you choose that here or you might want to add a new group we'll come back to that um, in a wee second so I'm going to add the text card just a normal text card and in here um, is where I introduce this way Okay, and then I might also in there, as well as the text, I might want to add my, my wee bit of audio as well. Now, if you have anything on your um, devices already, already, you can drag in an audio file, but I don't have that, so I'm going to click record. Welcome to our learning at home sway, everyone. And obviously you would elaborate on that a wee bit more. You can play it back, make sure you're happy with it. If you're not happy with it, you can bin it and re-record it. You can add it into your suite. So that allows you to add a voice record in there as well. Just takes a wee minute to do that. It takes a wee bit longer than um, uploading text. So now I might want to put in some photographs um, of the nursery areas just to remind us, you know, what sort of things are on off it at nursery, what nursery looks like, you know, just to keep it familiar. And it might be photos again then of the staff. So I'm going to click on stack. And what this does is it allows me to bring in photographs that will all be kept together in a group stack here. So I'm going to click on add content, add image, my device. And here's some pictures of, of the setting. Okay, and while it's doing that, let's have a think about what sort of resources we might want to put in. So I've got some um, links open down the bottom that I'll be able to copy and paste over. Okay, so let's have a heading here um, and let's see, we're going to do a wee session, um, a wee section on health and wellbeing um, and mindfulness. Okay, so I've popped my, my title in there and now I want to add a content and I know that in this Word document here, I've got something that I was looking at earlier on. Keeping in with our Aliens Love Underpants theme that we had earlier. It's not an embed link, so I can just pop this one straight in. Oopsie daisy, I lost my mouse there. Okay, so I would have a bit of a description there again. I would maybe even have a voice recording again um, of the purpose of this link and what it's for. So let's now, let's go and press the play button and see what we've got and how it looks so far. Okay. And we've got our photo stack. Now we can alter the size of this if we want to make these photographs full screen, but you'll see how it's a really nice way and almost like you're flicking through an actual stack of photographs. And it just again encourages that sort of pause for thought to talk about, you know, a picture rather than racing through everything. And then here we've got our little um, description here um, about mindfulness and then the link. And let's see if I test our link, make sure our link's working. Yeah, it's taking us to some nice um, little um, video clips with some nice soothing music for mindfulness from the CBB's website. Okay, so got some things there so far, but perhaps now I would like to um, embed some content. So, I would like to choose media for this part and the embed option. And then up here, I've got my padlets that I made earlier. Here's the, the child's voice padlet. And don't worry too much about padlets, we're going to come back to this on Friday um, and I'll certainly find out on Friday where on earth the, the whiteboard option's gone to. Um, 
we got it there it is now it just wasn't loading up properly on the when it was embedded it's draw sorry not whiteboard so this is what i was trying to show you earlier on so this would be the option that the children would get um, to share their voice their thoughts their feelings and ideas a very simple um, whiteboard interface where they can draw it is um, and change the colors and upload it that way okay so i want to share this and there's a few things that I need to check out first in here. So, my privacy, that's that's something that's really important to me. So, what I want to make sure I'm doing here is I've got it on secret, so it's not pu public. If it was private, nobody would be able to see it. You could have a password option, but we don't want to get into that just now. Um, that just makes things a wee bit more tricky. But if we have it on secret, what that is, is it's unlisted. So members of the public can't discover your Padlet. It's only people with the link. Um, and then I've made sure that I've got my permission right on so that they can write on it. They can't edit it. They can't, you know, delete things and redo things. Um, but they can contribute. They can add to it. So just made sure I've got that on there. I'm going to copy that big, big, long embed code. I'm going to paste it here into my sway. And now I'm going to go back and play and have a wee look. It will maybe just take a wee minute or two to load. Yep, so there it is there. Just want to check that again. Hmm. So I will definitely need to come back to this. There it is. That's what I've done wrong, everybody. Look, I had to scroll along to the right so that I could reach the drop down menu for all the options. So it was there all along. There we go. So there's all the options there. So I'm glad I discovered that today before in the session on Friday. Okay, so there's quite a few things we've got in here now so you maybe get the, the idea of how you upload and add content into it so how about the layout now how about how it looks because this isn't how we want it to look we want it to move from left to right so we're going to go here to the design mode we've been in storyline that's where we've been building it now we're going to go here to the design mode and then we are going to go to styles and in styles, this is where we can change the layout. So I would really like it on horizontal. And then I would like it on quite a nice, simple style. Maybe that's maybe a wee bit too much colour. Let's see. But if I wanted to save some time and I didn't want to go through all of these one by one, I can hit the remix button. And that very quickly goes through um, various different layouts. Now, I quite like the look of this. It's quite plain. The text is standing out there, isn't it? But I'm not too sure about that font. So I'm just going to go to the Customize button. And then I'm going to choose the font. And I bet you can guess what I choose. One that looks like either Sassoon Infant or one that looks like um, Comic Sans. Let's see this one. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Now, if I wanted, I could um, alter the text size there as well, or I might want to change the colours. You might have a, a colour theme. Um, you know, you might have a sort of dress code or a school um, or ELC colour theme that you want to use, but I think I'm just going to leave that on black and white. I'm quite happy with that now. So let me have a wee look. Oh, did we remember to choose left, left to right? There we go. Okay, so now we can scroll through. And you can see it's done all the hard work for you that would normally take a really long time trying to get it to look like that. It does it all for you. So let's just go back to edit mode now. So storyline. Okay, so I'm now going to add um, another couple of different ways to add the photos that I can show you. So I'm going to add a slideshow and I'm just going to add some more images. I'm just going to use the ones off my device um, for quickness here. Just the same ones again. So you can see the various layouts there. Okay, 
you know, while that's uploading, um, something else that we can do um, when we want to play back our sway is we can go to certain sections of it. So when you add a new card as a heading, that will count that as a section, almost like a chapter. So if your sway ends up becoming really full, because think about, you know, all the pieces of information you're going to get from home that you're going to then save to your device and upload to your sway, the sway, depending on the size of the centre you're in, the sway could become really quite big um, and there could be certain things that um, you're looking for or the families are looking for and they might want to skip right to that without scrolling through it. So when you add a heading, that counts um, as a chapter. Um, you'll see there the little number one beside it. So I'm just going to add another heading here just to show and that'll give me a number two there. Heading, um, let's see, um, coding activity. Again, you would have your description, you would maybe have a wee video, you would maybe have um, your voice recording. And, um, a little link here that will take us to CBB's coding. Pop that in there. Now let's go back and we'll play it and see how it looks so far. Okay, there's your photos must still be uploading because um, they've not came up there um, already. Just always test and make sure that your links are working there as well. That's taking us to CBB's Nina and the Neuron song all about coding. Okay, but back there in play mode, remember I said about the, the chapters and navigating quickly? Down here, um, next to the back and forward buttons, there's like a contents icon. Click on that and then it takes you to your um, heading so you can navigate between sections really quickly without having to scroll back and forward which is really handy so i'm just going to pause just now for questions dawn um before we have a look at the sharing side of things i have I, it's the regarding the embed domain and as a do you explain how to find the embed code mm -hmm. again? Yeah, of course I will, yeah. And Miss Keir is asking what time on Friday the tablet is. Friday is one o'clock on Friday. There's another one tomorrow at three o'clock looking at ThingLink. Um, so you can do more or less the same things that we're doing here, except you, it'll be using either a, a photograph or a video um, for all your links to sit um, behind. Um, okay, so... Back to the Padlet. It might not be a Padlet, it might be a survey, so we'll have a look at a survey as well soon. Um, when you go to share something, and not all digital tools give you the option um, to share it with an embed code. Some do, um, and Padlet is one of them. So when you go to share, you're looking for this here, embed in your blog or website, and it gives you a big long URL which means instead of it appearing as a hyperlink for you to click on, it squishes it up small for you as a little sort of shortened down version and puts it directly in um, to the sway. Okay. So let's say it was a form, um, a Microsoft form. So I'm going to go first of all to my forms. And then I'm going to search for my parent carer survey forum. Searching. Lots of different um, forms in here. There we go. Anyway, the ELC Parent Carer Learning at Home Feedback Form. And then up at the top right where I can share. I'm just going to um, maximise this so you can see it a wee bit clearer. Okay, I've got various options here. So only people in my organisation, that'll mean only people in GLOW can um, access this. So we don't want that. We want anyone to respond because our parents and carers don't have GLOW accounts. And then we can either um, share it here as a hyperlink. We can get a QR code. So you could pop a QR code in as well, but then that would mean needing an additional device to access it. Or here, you've got the option to embed. So what I do now, I click to embed, I click copy, 
back to this way, back to edit mode here at the very end. Um, so put my head in, parent carer survey. Oops, survey. Mm -hmm. And then I can add media, add embed code, paste the embed code in. And then I'm going to hit play. And hopefully, our photos have uploaded now as well. Scroll back through. There you go. And you can see now the survey is in there as well. Um, it doesn't say welcome, Eva, because I've taken it off the, the um, glow. Um, only people in my organisation thing that I had left on in the demo by mistake. So now anybody um, can respond to this. And you'll get the, the results um, in your forms. Nobody else will be able to see the results, but it just really saves time. It saves, you know, issuing another link, asking people um, if they can go somewhere else to give you that all important feedback. It's all there in the one place um, and it'll be fresh in people's minds because it's, you know, in relation to um, the learning story that you have just accessed there. Okay, now what happened to those photos that were uploading? Go back to edit. Okay, so here they are here. Group slideshow, which should be as now. No, it's still not there. Let's give them a wee bit a wee bit longer. It's a wee bit bigger eh, when you upload them as a slideshow. So let's say we've got all our content here now. We're quite happy with it and we want to share it. We want to get it out. It's a working document. We've got enough on it for now, but we want to get it out eh, to our families at home. So up here in the share button. Again, you want it to be anyone with the link eh, because the people that are accessing this don't have eh, access to Glow. Be careful what you're inviting them to do. It's not like what we've done in the beginning when we shared it to edit with a colleague. We just want people to be able to view this. You want to be in charge and you want to be able to moderate what content goes on to your sway. Um, and I think that's probably the safest bet as well. Because um, you never know, th things can get uploaded by mistake. It can happen to us, so it can happen to our parents and carers as well. I mean, this just makes life a wee bit more simple if you're in charge of uh, the pieces of, you know, information from home that come in and then it's you that has the sole responsibility for editing them um, and uploading them. Because you might also have learners that um, they're they don't have photography permissions so that's something that you need to be aware of as well you know for various reasons um, there's some children um, whose parents and carers or um, yeah, or carers don't give permission for their photographs or um, videos to be included um, so you want to make sure that there's somebody that's responsible in your um, ELC that knows who those um, people are whether it's key group workers or you know if there's somebody that is you know the sort of sole person for uploading photographs and um, just to make sure that there's nothing and um, goes in there by accident that shouldn't and um, if you're in any doubt about and um, photograph permissions and what you can and can't put on sway always check with your local authority you'll have a local authority photography um, permission a sort of standard one that goes out um, but when I was back in ELC I created an additional information sheet that explained what Sway was, you know, what our blog was, um, what sort of pieces of information we might put on it, who the audience might be, who might see it because bear in mind a this is an open link um, and although you're sharing it with your parents and carers, there's really nothing to stop them sharing it further. You know, they might want to share it with a granny um, or a family member and that, that link then could um, potentially um, be out there for anybody to see. So I always used to put um, a little disclaimer um, on our, our blog saying please don't share um, links to our shways, but you know share a link to the blog and bring people to the blog um, just that was just a, a sort of easier thing um, that we did because we put our shways then on the blog um, but again just double check with your local authority what your um, procedure is um, or if you're you know in a private um, sector, private partner establishment, check um, with your line manager what the um, permissions are for photography and things. Okay, so we've got anyone with the link, anyone with the link can view. Now, if you have a blog um, or a website, you might want to 
choose the embed code and you could embed it into the blog like what we did um, with the form and the um, Padlet there. And then once you've shared that link out, um, no matter what changes you make here, everybody then um, gets those updated changes, okay? So it doesn't matter if you add new photos, if you add videos, you don't need to regenerate a new link. It's the same link and um, what worked very nicely um, and I think it still is working really nicely. I've seen it in quite a lot of centres just now um, when you're back in um, school and ELC that is is um, creating a QR code from the link so you can use you know there's various different QR code generators now and they're all built into now the the um, the settings on your browsers and things where is it there's one in here as well I probably can't see it if we're looking at it um, is it an edge on that you can do that maybe it's in Google Chrome I'm sure there's a QR code generator that allows you to do it anyway without going onto another website. And we used to print them out in sticky labels and then it would say something like sharing my learning, um, scan this to find out what we have been doing or what we have been learning. And it just, you know, it saved the sort of the newsletter getting crumpled up and squished up at the bottom of the bag that, you know, never quite made it home or it blew away down the street or got stuck to a glue in. Um, and it just gives you a much richer picture of what's going on because you've got all that lovely, you know, the voice recording, you've got the, the photos, you've got the videos and all the links there as well that you don't get just from a static document. Okay, and then... Even if you can, they've got the QR code and edge. How that works, if you've got to open, and you click on the URL, URL an automatic little oh, icon will appear just to the right hand side and that generates it. Are you in it? Yeah, that's yeah, it. right there. Yeah. I forgot, I was looking, I was in yeah. the, the settings at the side saying, I'm sure it's down here, there's a wee icon for it somewhere, but there it is, thanks so much Dawn. So all i done there was highlighted the, the URL text like Dawn said, and then it gave me the option here, create QR code for the page. And then you can download that and you've got a QR code as well. So it might be that you're, you are, there's packs and things being sent home. I'm not sure how it's all working in various different establishments, but that might be um, another way to issue that link out. You might have group call where you have all the parents' emails. You might want to post it out um, in an email that way. And whatever your channels are, of communication normally are, you would be sending it out there. Um, now, you do have the option here as well um, to take away the share button. Um, so that when parents and carers get the link, they can't then, you know, share it on via the button. There's nothing stopping them, of course, from copying and pasting the URL, but that just takes away somewhere else um, for it to be shared. Or you can, um, if you so wished, you can require a password for it. So if you do want to protect this way um, and prevent other people from, you know, out with the parents and carers seeing it, um, you can put a password on it. Um, and it can be a password for everyone, okay? So if you wish to do that, that just then adds in another step um, and it just might make it that wee bit harder to reach. Um, it really depends, audience and purpose. What, Who do you want to see it, um, you know, and what are you trying to achieve? And then you also have the option there in the, the um, sharing button to, where did it go? Reset sharing options. There it is, right there. Okay, so you can reset your sharing options. So if something's happened and you want to take that sway down in a hurry, you can reset the sharing options and the URL will no longer work. Um, and you know that that sway is only going to be for yourself to see. So, a couple of different um, the options there. Now, um, what time are we on? Ten minutes. Okay, you can all. Can I ask a quick yes. question? Mrs. Ferguson is asking about Seesaw. I don't, I don't know about Seesaw, so I thought I'd just check. Are yeah. sways okay within Seesaw as well? We, you could put your link for your sway into Seesaw. Does that answer the question? The link can go, yeah, oh, yeah you can put your link anywhere. Yeah. That's fine. Okay, yeah, I think that's, that's answered the question. Okay. Oh, brilliant. Good, good. Okay, so I'm just going to go back now um, to the very beginning here of Sway. Um, and what I would like to do um, here, back into it, 
let's say that I had, you know, this was my sort of standard template sway. I always wanted the sort of background um, to look like this. You can also create a wee logo as well. Um, what you can do here is you can save this as a template. So this will always be your sort of starter for 10. Um, you know, if you had, you might want to just set it up with, um, you know, the, the background photo and you might want to have some sort of generic headings and this will be the same sway that you then use, um, you know, when you have different topics, you've got the option there to save it as a template. If you wanted to share this sway with maybe another setting or another colleague um, to then duplicate and edit, you can do that through the duplicate this sway button and that will give them a carbon copy but it's their own carbon copy and it won't make any changes um, to your sway. So there's a couple of different things you can do there. You can also um, export this sway as a PDF or a Word document but bear in mind it's just going to give you a static copy and none of the um, voice recordings or the videos will play or anything like that as well. Um, and what else did we want to look at back here at the beginning? What I quite like about this is you have an analytics um, feature built into Sway. So you can click on this to find out the time spent on the Sway. So you can see um, how many views a Sway has had. You can see what the average time spent on it is. And you can see if it's been a glance, a quick read or a read in depth. So that kind of gives you a wee bit of sort of insight as to how popular um, and how well your sways have been used at home as well. So that's in the analytics option. And that's something that's really handy. Okay, a couple of places that I'd like to show you um, for next steps, because this is a, it's a whistle stop tour. And I appreciate it can be a lot in a 60 minute session, especially if you've never um, came across sway before. We have, and I'll pop the links in at the end for you, through the Microsoft Educator Centre, there is a one hour online course called Digital Storytelling with Sway. So I'll go through everything that we've gone through, um, but in small bite sized chunks. Um, and what I always like to do and what I think is a really handy thing, if you can have two devices or even two tabs open, I'll have the, the course open and then I'll have Sway open. I'll do a wee bit of reading on the course. I'll, you know, I'll check out what is it asking, what is it telling me to do. I'll then go and do it in this way and then I'll go back. So I'm quite a visual learner like that and I'll like break it down into wee bits and have a wee play um, at the same time as well, just so I understand it a wee bit better. If you create an account with the Microsoft Educator Centre, it can be quite addictive and you can find yourself, um, you know, going from course to course to collect the badges because you collect these nice little um, colourful badges. And it's also a really good record for your professional development as well um, because it logs the time spent and things too. Also through Microsoft, through Office 365 support, there is a sway section in there as well. So if you, you know, maybe some some of you still prefer to have things printed out, I know some people still do, and um, you can go into all these little articles here or you can save the web page and it'll give you the step by step um, explanations and instructions for how you do certain things. And then we also have, and I think I've maybe closed it down, but I've got the link down here on our um, DigiLearn blog we have a series of bite-sized videos where did I put them here we go here it's just load in and a wee bit like the same idea as on Microsoft Educator but these videos are all set within the context of Glow because um, it's a wee bit different the way that we access things um, and the sharing options that we have because our organisation essentially means GLOW. Um, so they're little short videos, no longer than five minutes, taking you through, you know, what a sway is, how you create a new one, your sharing options, um, creating templates um, and then further um, things that you can do in there, like starting a sway from their own topics that gives you your backgrounds and things, um, or starting a sway from a document. You may already have a PowerPoint learning story or you know something on a Word document and you've got great content on there already, you've got good images and you've got good pieces of information, you can pull that straight into the sway as well and then just hit the style button, hit the remix button to get it just um, so, and then you can go back and add um, parts in wherever 
um, you need to add those parts in. So I'm just going to stop sharing my screen now, Dawn. We hope you enjoyed this webinar and found it helpful. Thank you for watching.